All right, I haven't decided whether or not I will watch the remake. I have seen it before, and I do own it. I got it for, like, nothing. I got it for three or four bucks. Something crazy cheap. That's the only reason I picked it up. I did see it in theaters. I was not a fan of it. Um, I don't know if I'll rewatch it or not. But uh, when I usually say that, uh, I don't. So, um, anyway... So let's talk about Poltergeist 3. Let's see how this shit hole held up because I have always championed this as my favorite of the franchise. And am I a lunatic? To a lot of people, yes. And a lot of people are going to disagree with me anyway. But, um, yeah. I stick with it. I think this is still my favorite of the three, man. I really, really enjoyed this. I... I this is this is a, a completely uh, overlooked one for me. I think people fucking hate this one and they think it's the worst in the franchise. This has a lower rating on IMDb than the fucking remake. That's pathetic, man. This movie's fucking cool. This movie's fun. So, yeah, whatever. It, I, I I'll talk about it in detail here, obviously. But uh, I was I was a fan. I was definitely a fan. Um, okay, first things first. This is criminal that Heather O'Rourke is not top build in this film. Now, I don't usually care about stuff like that, but Tom Skerritt, then Nancy, then Heather? What? Dude, he okay, Heather O'Rourke is not only the face of the fucking franchise, but she's the main character of this movie. So, what gives... And she died before this film came out, right? So why would they not put her as top build? That's fucking crazy to me. So yeah, that annoyed me. When I saw it, I was like, why am I seeing Tom Skerritt's name right now? You know? What? Like, what? And yeah, so I'm... And then Nancy Allen as like, K. Okay, hmm. Laura Flynn Boyle plays the, uh, you know, sister in this. Um, obviously her uh, cousin, uh, well, step or cousin-in-law. I don't know how any of this works because Nancy Allen, Pat, Pat is Diane's sister. And, which, of course, is funny because it is Tom Skerritt's character here that is the one that wants to go back for Carol Ann throughout this. And Pat's like, fuck her. We'll get to that, though. Um, I just thought that was pretty funny. So we got this big high-rise building, some Nakatomi Plaza shit going on in here. And um, what was his name again? I wrote it down. I'm not seeing it right now. Um... Not Scott. Uh, that's the boyfriend. Um, I swear I wrote it down in here. No, Bruce. Bruce. That's what it is. Like uh, the Jaws shark. Um, but yeah, so Bruce, who like operates the building, he's like the head of it. Um, he uh, he's having serious issues with this building, but he works inside the building and lives inside the building. How cool is that? I love that. I mean, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could live in this thing. I don't know if I could live in a high-rise like that. Um, I just am real weird about that kind of stuff. I don't like being in big buildings like that. I always feel like an earthquake's going to happen. The whole thing's going to come crumbling down or something. I just, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like any time I like go to Vegas and I have to stay in these huge buildings and I'm like fucking 30 floors up. I don't like it. I don't like sleeping up there and I want out instantly so like every night i'm always just like oh man one more night one more night we're out of here i don't like it so anytime i see people who are like a, apartments and they live in those ones that are like 30 stories up i'm just looking at them like oh hell no hell no i wouldn't live in there i have no interest i want to be on the fucking first floor or the second floor any of those i'm fine with but uh once the buildings get too big i don't like them i wouldn't live in them but I do like the idea of living in the same building you work in. That's pretty badass. Just like get I like how he gives her the keys and he's like, who's driving me to work? And she goes in and she pops the keys in the elevator and, and 
he, she's driving him to work. I thought that was super cute. And Tom Skerritt, I love. I always loved him. Um, I love him as the dad and the other sister with Juliette Lewis. Uh, I, I always like him. He's a good actor, and um, he's very, very likable in this movie. Um, but Nancy Allen, on the other hand, is not likable at all. That being said, I was struggling with that throughout the movie, not in a bad way, but just in a like, wow, what a bitch. What a bitch. Like, she legit has a moment where she's like, um, Caroline's not really our family. Let's ditch the bitch. Let's go. I, I, we got our daughter. That's, this is our family. Like, sorry, too bad, so sad. Moving on. You know, I was like, damn, dude, this chick's cold hearted. That being said, though, that does play into the film. Like, Caroline even comes to her at the, you know, towards the end of the movie and is like, you don't care about me. Just let me go. You know, take your family and leave like you want to. And this is where she kind of has her turning point. And she's like, you know what? I fucked up. I do love you. I was just scared. This and that. So it actually makes for pretty good character development. I talk about this all the time. We always want to think we're going to be the hero. We always think we're going to want to do the right thing. And realistically, this isn't her daughter. You know? And not everybody is just going to immediately be like, this is a child and she's related to me, so I'm going to protect her with every bit of my soul. Like, people get scared, man. She's seeing things that she never knew existed, that she, her brain can't even process. She's so terrified. She wants to get out of the room. And if you're telling me that you don't believe there's people out there that would instantly react like that, like, fuck this, I'm out. I don't care who's in there. I don't care if it's my daughter. I don't care who it is. I'm gone. There are definitely people like that. People who genuinely love their kids, love their family, but their fear takes gets the best of them, takes over. It's very believable. You don't know how you're going to react until shit happens. And, you know... Somebody like shooting up a place and you grabbing your kids and this and that is one thing. And that's a heroic act in itself for sure. But this is a different level. This is playing with things that most people don't actually believe exist. They are open to the idea. But a lot of them, if they actually saw this stuff, they'd be so scared they wouldn't even be able to move. They'd be scared stiff, like legitimately. So, I don't know. When I watch this, and I see her and how she's reacting. I, I think our initial judgment is like, oh, well, you should only protect her and this and that. And yes, I want to believe I'd be that person. And I'm pretty sure. But dude, seriously, put yourself in these shoes. You've seen people coming out of mirrors. You've seen a woman who was touched and turned instantly into like a rotting corpse. And then your daughter came up out of her rotting corpse. Your brain would not be able to process this shit. You would be like, I want out of the situation. I'm sorry. I'm too scared. I'm a pussy. I don't care. I know I'm terrible, but I can't deal with this. I gots to go. There are so, so many people, probably more than... 50%. We're talking the majority here, I think, would lose their fucking minds if something like this happened. And would not be able to take it and be like, I don't care who's in there, I'm out of here. So, anyway, I was just thinking about that when I was watching this. Like, what a bitch. And then I'm like, I'm still thinking, like, what a bitch, but I'm like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's not your kid, right? So, would you rush back in after you saw all of this shit? I know a lot of you I, I think a lot of you would it straight up admit, like, no, <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, and that's okay. I get it. It's terrifying. Uh, this movie mostly plays with reflection. Everything is done in reflection. Everything's done in mirrors, puddles, whatever. Anything that can reflect light. It, it, all, the, all the gags, all of the horror, everything takes place within reflection. Um, and all that reflection gag throughout the film, the way that those effects are done, which... If I saw it correctly, the guy who directed this movie and wrote the film as well, maybe. Um, yeah, he wrote, directed, and I think he even did the special effects, if I saw that correctly. Um, so, really, really talented dude here. Uh, and I also saw in the trivia that he formed a very close relationship with Heather O'Rourke in this movie. So, it must have been tra tragic. That she dies so shortly after the filming of this. Um, but you can tell in this movie that she looks wrong. She looks off. Her face is puffy as fuck, man. She looks sick in this movie. 
from what I can tell, knowing that what happened to her, and he even said in the trivia, like, you can see her face is puffy. I, 100%. She's got, like, this really fat face in this movie, and it doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like she's just got, like, baby fat on her face, or she's, you know, maybe packed on some pounds or whatever. It looks like something's wrong. Something's, something's off. And I see that a lot of this movie. It's just something's not right and it's really really fucking sad it's really hard to watch in that context when you're thinking about it um we find out that carolyn's i uh carol ann's iq in this is 150 so i guess she's a super genius now um which plays into the movie zero uh, i don't understand the inclusion of this at all except for to introduce us to dr satan dr satan it's Dr. Like, Satan, but the way they say it in the movie, it just keeps sounding like they're saying Dr. Satan, and I keep expecting like Captain Spaulding to jump out at any moment and offer them the murder ride and some free chicken. Um, but yeah, Dr. Satan. Dr. S it's like Dr. Sartan from freaking Halloween 2018. Um, and I like how like all the mirrors in the place start breaking because the spirit is inhabiting them and that the entire building is like malfunctioning this is like gremlins 2 all over again this brand new high-rise building is supposed to be state-of-the-art nothing works um so that's that's cool like all the free all the frozen stuff uh heaters won't work nothing's working and uh then you get the uh, creepy ass carol ann in in the reflection which we see throughout the movie who i refer to as scarol ann uh, really creepy shit, man. Real freaky looking little uh, mask that they put on that girl. Whether or not Carol Ann or Heather O'Rourke actually wore that prosthetic or not, I, I, I would assume so. She looks she looks freaky as fuck. I love it. Um, and then the, the, the daughter in this goes and totally fucks with the camera so that her and her friends can party down in the pool. And uh, they even go into the grocery store. And, and Jack Beer, although he pays for it, um, I don't know how he calculated this and, like, he left enough money up on there. And they're going to be like, as soon as they come in, they're going to be like, okay, so who was in here? Who has access? She's going to get caught. The whole idea that they went and bought the beer and paid for it and they grabbed, like, Cokes and beers and then they left money there, it's going to be very easy to determine who did that. Like, she's not thinking at all. Mm. But, you know, she's got a thing for Scott. Scott's got a thing for her. They're being stupid kids. Kids do stupid shit all the time. Um, Dr. Sar Satan in this. I'm just calling him Dr. Satan. I don't give a shit. Dr. Satan. Dr. Satan is Dr. Satan in this. He's a piece of shit. This guy's awful, man. He's this, like, you know, psychologist. And he thinks that Carol Ann is able to group hypnotize people into believing things because of her high IQ I guess that's how this plays into this movie and uh, so he comes to investigate this while they call him in and he's just like he's like telling his wife to like cook him dinner he's like he's a total piece of shit man he's like uh, John, uh, John Bender's father or something um, so him and that guy should go bowling together sometime uh, but yeah, he, he's dreadful and you're just waiting for him to die the whole movie. This is the first character in this franchise that you want to see die. And he does. So, good. Um, Scott kind of getting launched up out of the pool. Uh, this, like, this is awesome. He comes out, he's like completely covered in ice. He looks like the chick that's like tied up in Saw 3 who freezes over. Uh, he jumps up out of the pool that's completely frozen, breaks apart, and he comes up, and he's, he's like, they're, like, breaking the ice away from his face and everything. That's awesome, dude. Pretty much everything from here for me is awesome. Um, even stuff before this was Scaroland and stuff. Uh, really cool. I like all the horror in this. All the horror elements in this I think are great. I think all the gags in the mirror are awesome. I think they're great, like, practical effects and, and in-camera effects and maybe post effects and whatever the hell they did here to make these effects where people are turning and they're not turning in the mirrors and um, you know them all walking and then one of the characters is next to him but not next to him in the mirror next to him and all that like that's really creative really hard shit to achieve at this time in filmmaking so really impressive stuff here um, just from uh, you know an effect standpoint and uh, the, the, the scene where where Pat 
and Bruce are like getting pulled into Carolyn's door the way Carolyn's door looks like it's melting and then like Carolyn's being pulled out and then like uh, Tangina comes in and then like t talks them you know is like tells lets them in on the on the uh, the trick and then she like puts her face up and it's like damn you and it's actually um you know, Kane. That's that. That's doing it. That stuff's all great, man. I love the look of that, the aesthetics, all of that stuff. Just is great. And this is where Pat's like, "I'm out. I don't care. We got our daughter." You know, pretty pretty closely after there. Um, but then, you know, Tangina comes with them, and she goes to the mirror. And as soon as as soon as she's touched, she immediately turns in to a fucking like dried out corpse hits the ground and then the daughter crawls up out of her that is just straight up awesome that's straight up awesome i think it's probably my favorite thing that happens in the entire franchise it is so fucking cool tangina is just zapped to death she hits the ground and then a girl crawls up out of her like freddie out of jesse in nightmare on elm street 2 it is so fucking cool i adore it um, so right there alone, that's so, so cool. And I dare you to disagree with me there. That's just such a badass scene. Um, and then after that happens, um, after the imposter Carol thing happens, as they're trying to pull her out of the door and this and that, when Tangina comes in, they're still somewhat doubting. They're not a hundred percent like, Hmm. And they're actually having to like decide whether or not they're going to go with Dr. Satan or they're going to go with Tangina. Like, Hmm. I don't know do we believe that this is actually happening dude you were almost pulled into a fucking parallel dimension by a demon that looked like you know the the kid that you're sitting for are you kidding me you're questioning things no fucking way so yeah i i don't know anyway um and donna there it is donna crawls out of the dead body um and yeah pat wants to run out on carol ann um, this happens after Tangina is killed and Donna crawls out of her. Dude, this is what I'm talking about. If you saw that shit, your brain would explode. <sighs> um, and then I like that Scott and Donna both come out and they're, then they're, you know, possessed or, or that's not even really them. When they come out, it's actually... Uh, Kane and they like make out and then they pull each other like his hand starts crumbling away and then her face is is like ripping away why they would rip at each other and like break the physical appearance of what they're trying to pretend to be I don't understand I mean I get it from like a filmmaking standpoint like to show us as the audience but I don't know I guess they can just fix it in a second whatever but then they walk towards the mirror and they keep walking in the mirror and then it pans over and they're gone from the hallway these are great effects and this is awesome for the film i love all that stuff and they like push the freaking dr satan down the uh down the elevator shaft and then he comes up on the elevator and then the door the door is open and scott's inside and then they make it and all that that's great stuff really really cool stuff why this film is so hated on i don't get it i would love that poltergeist 3 blu-ray i mean i'll take the poltergeist 2 one as well but the prices they are now for the scream factory one is just so fucking outrageous so hopefully one day they'll release a proper box set from scream factory all four of the movies in one in a in a cool you know box set like the ones i have right here um but we'll see one day um and then the possessed um the possessed frozen cars and then the one that um, the one Kane is in, and the window is like opened up a little bit, and a light is beaming through it, and the cars are like coming at him and smashing into each other, and all that. This scene is awesome. I love the look of the cars. I think it's so fucking cool looking. I love when Caroline gets pulled into the puddle, like it just looks like a normal puddle, and then it looks down, and hands come up and pull her through, and then um, you know. Donna and Scott are trying to get her up out of there. All that stuff is so rad. I love it, man. Everything that happens in the parking garage is so cool. Like, and then the cars smash into each other, and he lights the fucking uh, Die Hard 2 style. He throws the, the Zippo into it, and it burns the cars, and they blow up, and then it, like, zaps, and it's just like the, uh, you know, sprinklers going off instead. 
it's all so cool, man. That whole chase sequence with all the frozen cars, the way the frozen cars looks, that's just so awesome looking. So, I don't know, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend the hell out of this. I'm so glad this held up as well as I remember it because I was going to be bummed if it didn't. But now I'm glad that it did so I can be one of the only probably positive reviews of this film and probably the only person who says that he prefers this to all three. You know, of the three. This is my... Pr or four, even. We'll throw in the remake. <laughs> I'll definitely like this more than the remake. Uh, and the fact that this is lower rated than the remake on IMDb is criminal to me. Um, and then, yeah, Carol Ann has that, that moment where she tells Pat, like, I don't... You know, you don't love me. Just leave. Uh, that's good stuff. And then uh, Kane comes in and Pat decapitates him. This is a great sequence as well. My kids were totally fine, by the way, while watching this. They were totally fine in the second one, the third one. They were they were enjoying it. And I asked them after. I was like, did you like them? And they're like, yep. And I was like, which is your favorite one? And they said the first one. Um, but I was like, did you like all three? And they were like, yeah, we liked them. And they went to bed and I haven't had any issues yet. So hopefully I'm not like in a 10 minutes dealing with kids crying and screaming. Oh my God, the mirrors are coming to life. Even my daughter right now, she was in getting in bed and she was like, she's like, dad, can you, can you close the mirror so I can watch the TV on the mirror as I try to sleep? And I'm like, you want to look into the mirror right now? I didn't say this out loud, but I was like, I just, you just watched an entire movie of basically haunted mirrors. And then she's like purposely looking into mirrors to sleep. she never does that never she's never done that before but now she's like oh i want to look into the mirror it's a badass kid right there let me tell you what um and then okay so then tangina comes out and she's like look i'll trade you you can let carol ann go i'll take you into the light and then the whole like necklace amulet thing I, i'm assuming that came from taylor is that is that what that was i, I don't remember it from the second one uh, it probably was i just spaced it but when she said it was like a, you know a native american friend or i was like it's got to be his so whatever but she's like i gave you this and all this and that i'm not really sure what this does i don't because it didn't protect tangina at all so she got touched and immediately zapped but then pat gets touched a couple times as does you know a, f a couple of them and they're fine they don't instantly die so why tangina immediately turns into a dead body and bursts and all that stuff i don't know i guess because she was a vessel for donna to come through and she allowed herself to be i don't know whatever but she gives her the necklace and then she doesn't really do anything with it so not really sure what the necklace does in this film maybe as i said maybe i missed it but uh it didn't seem to do much uh, but tangina just kind of comes in saves the day and she's like look trade me for her and she's like, I got the necklace. I can save us all. And she's like, no, it's, this is the way it's got to be. And it's like, but you gave me this necklace. Like, hmm, I don't understand. And then I love it. She's like, I'll guide you to the light because I have the knowledge and this and that. And then as soon as she grabs his hand, there's just like a light that's shining behind him. And they just walk towards it. And that's that. And it's like, you couldn't find that light? Did, it was a Tangina that brought it to the forefront. It was just so funny to me that it was like, Oh, okay. I'll I'll lead you there. I know the way. I know the navigation. We, you know, we'll uh, we'll go this way. I know the coordinates. Don't worry. I got the inside info. And then the lights like two feet behind him. She's like, Oh, here it is. Let, let's just. You didn't see this the whole time. For like a hundred years, that that light right there. That's the light. The big light. The big shining bright light. That's the one. Go towards that. It seems like it'd be something easy to find. Like they're like, Oh, it's hard for them to find on look hard <laughs> it's right fucking there it's right fucking there um and this almost feels like a bittersweet ending because like it's good that they you know got to live and carol ann was returned donna all them i i'm assuming donna and uh and scott came back but maybe not i don't know were they there at the end um i can't remember were they i don't know but when they were marched off it gave me the impression that they were dead Am I crazy on that? If I if they're not at the end, I, I'm 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 believing that Donna and Scott died. <laughs> I'm just going with that, but maybe they are at the end. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I don't like that Kane gets to go to heaven. Is that where Tangine is taking him? He don't deserve it. He don't deserve it. Um, but whatever. Um, and then we get this really stupid ending 
where they show the building and then lightning strikes all around it and you hear Kane's laugh like a hint for more Kane's coming back Tangina really didn't take him to the light it like completely it completely fucks up Tangina's sacrifice like it kind of is very dismissive of what it just set up like Tangina just sacrificed herself and she says to Carolyn like to Carolyn like tell her you know um, it's over. It's it's done. I've, I've taken care of this. This house really is clean now. She's good to go. I'm sacrificing my life. But then they have this tacked on dumbass like last moment of like, oh, or is it? The or is it is a total fuck you to everything they just set up. So cut that out. Like that just needs to go. That whole, and that, what does it do? Is it supposed to scare the audience? Is it supposed to tease them for more? Or is there going to be a fourth plan sequel if, if uh, or well, I guess a third sequel, but a fourth film, if if Heather O'Rourke didn't die, I don't know. That whole ending though can go fuck itself. But anyways, all right. So uh, Poltergeist three, there you go. I'm a big fan. What do you got? What about you guys? Anybody out there? Anybody with me? I know one other guy, maybe two, that are with me on this. That I really like. I want to say it's Brandon Kenshin and Keen Gross. I'm pretty sure those are my two Poltergeist three buddies. Um, but anybody else you want to add your name to the list of people who prefer the third or really like the third and will defend it with me get on that list let me know below adios <laughs>